Hey guys, how you doing? I'm back again. It's been a little time since I posted. Helping you guys get through becoming a motor coach uh, operator. Got a little time here. I'm back at the dreadful Montreal. But not too bad right now. Um, they said it's a tornado warning. I don't think it's so much in my area, but up here. It is very windy outside, so. Um, and I just saw the news, they lifted the tornado uh, warning. That's good, because I've never seen a tornado, and I don't know how I would respond if I did. Particularly in, in, the, uh, in the bus. That's one of my fears when driving in the Midwest. What do I do if I catch a tornado? Well, I know what I'm doing. The question is, what the people on the bus want to do? <laughs> Every man for themselves at that point. I'm just joking, but probably wouldn't be just like that, because I wouldn't know what to do. I'll probably just turn the bus around and try to go across the field. All right, today we're going to get into driving safe. A lot of you guys have a lot of questions, so I'm going to do, I think, a three-part series on just being safe out on the road. Uh, we're going to talk about driving using the five keys. That's what we're going to talk about today, which everybody does either knowingly or unknowingly, or they use part of it. But if you're using one of them, I, I do believe you're using all of them. Um, a lot of you guys also ask on the uh, channel, how do you know where to go? We're going to talk about that. I'm going to try to wrap that up in a series. And the final one I'm going to spend a lot of time on because I think it's very important. Um, and in training, you don't spend enough time doing this. Just my opinion because uh, the length of the training is only two weeks. And a lot of the training should be done at night. We're going to talk about night driving. <sighs> night driving is very dangerous. Very dangerous if you're not alert, <clears throat> particularly if you're in the area you're unfamiliar with. And I'm going to show you how to navigate through that using tra traditional devices, even using the sky. <laughs> I use everything. Remember I tell you in one of these videos, use all the resources you have that's available to you and for you. Because when you call a certain number and ask them for directions because they're not there, they're going to just tell you they can't help you. And now what do you do? So I'm going to show you exactly how to be safe while driving at night. Okay, I'm going to start off with a story. About maybe three weeks ago, I was coming down from Boston. That's Boston, Massachusetts, if I say it right. And I was heading back to New York City. So I'm heading south, you know, on the uh, 91 to the 95. And I look on the north side, I see a couple of buses heading up. And I believe they were going to Boston. And it happened to be a couple of new guys getting trained, learning the route. And I'm like, oh, look at there. So, you know, as I drive down, I give them the old wave, you know. And I get no response from them. Eh, I keep driving. I see another bus. Oh, there's another one. So I'm, I'm quite sure they're route breaking. So I give them a wave out of courtesy. No response. And I see another one. Same thing, wave. Another one. A couple of days later, I catch up to them. I thought I was trying to catch up to them, but I saw them and I was speaking to them because they was going back on their route breaking. And I said, yo, and the trainer was right there. And I said, yo, guys, man, when you see another driver wave at you, it's okay to wave back. It's okay to wave back. Uh, one of the drivers said, uh, we was taught to keep our hands on the wheel and not to take them off. And that's true. You're supposed to keep your hands on the wheel. But my question is, when you get that itch, you know what I'm talking about, driving. when you get that itch anywhere in your body, what you going to do? Keep your hand. No, you're going to take that hand off and try to satisfy that itch. I don't care where it is. <laughs> I don't care where it is. Otherwise, because you can't concentrate on what's in front of you, you're going to be concentrating on, I wish I could get that scratch, get a scratch going. So, and I was telling the young man, well, that's part of your keys, pretty much. Not so much waving, but I'm going I'm to get into it where it falls in. Um, you know, getting the big picture and all that, that's part of that. And he gets response for us, well, why do I need to look over there? Now, at that point, and I'm a little more experienced in this, and I understand, I got a little nervous, because you want to look on the other side of the road for a number of reasons. First of all, getting the big picture is one of the reasons, but let's go into the night driving. It's night. Let's just take the most extreme version of the night driving. It's night. Not that far, but just far enough to, to diminish your, your line of sight. And you're driving. And you're on a straight, but for some reason, your mind is telling you there's a curve coming up. And you're driving, you're like, oh, is that curve? Which way is it going? And this happens. These are the illusions. You're going to have illusions out there. Which way is the curve going? Is it going left, right, or is it going straight? 
mind you, you have to make a decision very soon because that point of entry is coming up. Now, let's say you're just looking straight. You ain't looking nowhere else. You're still trying to figure that out. By the time you figure it out, it may be too late. You may be running that bus either over a cliff. You may make the wrong decision instead of making a left when you should have made a right. However, if you would have looked across on the other side and saw the cars coming towards you, it would have told you, it would have told you number one, it's a curve either that you got to make is either going to be to the left because it's coming from the right side on the other side, so to speak, on the left side on the other side. So it's actually it's coming, is it concave? I believe it's concave. Yeah, it's, it's coming concaved out, so you know. Yeah, so you're coming, you're looking at the other side just to see where the traffic comes, and that'll give you a good indication exactly where you need to turn the bus, whether you keep it straight or you go left or go right. Another thing, in the daytime, you want to be looking at the side on the opposite side of the road because that person is not as experienced as you are, and they may be distracted, come, distracted coming around the curve. Maybe they're they texting, or looking down, and when they're looking up, it's too late. They're coming right at you. Had you looked over there, you could have seen all that activity going on and put the bus in a safe position to be out of the way of a collision. That's why you need to look over there. So, you know, after I talked to him about they he pretty much got in and went on route breaking. So let's just talk about being safe out there using the five keys. Let's talk about aiming high. And that they all kind of come together. They all pretty much is one, one long, long meaning, but they just break it down. Aiming high means looking about 15 seconds up the road. I like to say I like to look as far as I can see in a line of sight. So I'm looking far ahead. You want to look far ahead all the way up. And not just that, you want to scan left and right. So you're like a, a, a beacon, just looking, just looking. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. The reason you want to look, sometimes you want to, you're, going to come, you're going to come up to a turn. You're going to make a, a left turn uh, to get on a highway route. And uh, you need to know if that's the turn. Sometimes the sign is not going to be always right in front of you. Sometimes the sign is going to be either on the left side when you're making a, a far left side if you're making a left turn or on a far right side if you make the make the right turn. I could tell you yesterday I was coming up and there was a sign right in front of me pointing to the left. But when I looked to the left and it was dark, there was no entry. The entry was maybe about, I would say about, a, uh, about 10, five yards up. Five yards up was the entry. Now, had I not looked up or looked as far as I could see, I would probably made the wrong turn and probably put the bus in danger. So that's why it's important to look, you know, as far as you can see, not just 15 seconds, but as far as you can see. If the road is bending, try to look around the road bending. When you had a light, look around. Start looking around. It's a good opportunity to start reading those signs. Make sure you don't, you know, make the wrong turn because you don't want to get lost. Key not, key not getting lost is reading the signs for the most part. So you want to look as far as you can see, and you want to practice that. Practice that all the time, even when you're going on the road it's straight. Just keep looking, and not only looking forward, look behind you. That's what you got rear view mirrors from. You got a left mirror and a right. Mirror. See what's behind the bus. You don't want old Smokey to be back there. I know it's old turn, old Smokey. Right? You don't want to be Smokey to be back there, and you in your groove, and before you know it, you're getting pulled over because you're speeding. But you didn't look behind and you wasn't looking at your speed. So that's why rule number one is important. Let's go down to um, rule number two, which intertwines into rule, rule number one. Five keys, rule number two. So get the big picture. And when you go to training, you're going to hear that like, I don't know, like you hear your name. You're going to come out of there thinking your name is get the big picture. Because you're going to hear that forever. So basically getting the picture, get, getting the big picture is basically what I said in rule number one. You just want to take it all in. Just look and see what's in front of you, what's behind you, what's on the side. The key to keeping the bus safe is pretty much not getting yourself boxed into a situation. You always want to, well, we're, not, we're just jumping ahead, but you always want to leave the bus alone if possible on the road. So you want to get the big picture. You want to look at stop signs. You want to look at the pedestrians crossing. And another thing, when, you, when you're driving, and you come into a turn, let's say you're on the inside, it's a car on the outside, I like to look at the wheels, because the, the wheels are like the eyes of the car. If that wheel is moving a little bit, I know this car, this, this uh, driver is about to do something really stupid, and what I'm gonna do, I'm just let him do it. I'm gonna fall back, let him get in front, because you're gonna find out people just wanna get on the bus, and then go nowhere, be right in front of you, just in front of you. They're not speeding up or nothing, they just wanna get in front of you. So you wanna get the big picture. The big picture will keep you and your customers 
in the back safe. Take it all in. Look at the stop signs. Just see what's in the scene so you know how to keep the bus safe. After you get the big picture, you want to keep your eyes moving. And that pretty much goes back to that first story when the gentleman told me, you know, the new driver was telling me why he has to look, why he have to look across on the oncoming traffic in the other lane heading the other direction. You want to keep your eyes moving because what's going to happen, particularly it happens at night. It can happen any time, but it happens a lot at night. Um, you're driving, you know, you're driving, and all of a sudden you've been driving for three, four hours straight, no brake, nothing. You're just driving, and you don't realize that the vibration, the wind noise, all of that is actually hypnotizing you. You really don't realize it till you realize it. Next thing you know, you look up, you're like, how did I get here? You know, how did I get here? You want to keep your eyes moving to break that, what they call the white line fever, I believe it's called. You want to break that up. Break that white line fever. So, you don't become mesmerized and hypnotized. And it's easy to do. And sometimes it's almost like you're being possessed. It's like, oh, you can't move your eyes. But you got to keep looking around. Going back to getting the big picture. Going back to looking as far as you can see. 15 seconds or better. Yeah, so keep your eyes moving. Another thing, let's go to the next rule. Uh, I almost spoke about it. That's rule number four. Always leave yourself out. And, and you learn that not just in training. You learn that when you got your driving license, your regular driving license, you got that. So you always want to keep your, um, you always want to leave the bus out. So for example, you're taught to ride in the right lane, right? Right lane. That's not always the best lane, but for the most part, it's the, it's the lane you want to be in, particularly at night because now you don't have to be looking on the right side. That's less work for the brain to um, process what's going on over there. You just have to look on the natural side, which I call the left side. So um, leave yourself out. So what happens is, well, in that case, if you don't do that, let's say you got a car in front of you, a vehicle in front of you, a vehicle in back, and here come a tractor on your left. You're in the right lane. If one of these two vehicles or three vehicles decide to do something stupid, it's going to involve you. It's going to involve you. You have no way to get out of there other than maybe the right uh, median. It may not be safe. It may not. It may be a short median. So you always want to create space. This is the way I learned years ago before I even started driving. It. Always create space with your vehicle, whether it's the bus or your car. Keep space around the bus. Keep space around your private car. It'll keep everybody safe. And last, about not last, but not least, make sure they see you. Make sure your lights working, horns working. Because when somebody has to do something stupid on the spur, like cut you off, you gotta hit that horn. Maybe they're asleep. You don't know. You don't know how long they've been driving. They could have been driving just as long as you. Remember, you out there with other commercial drivers. They're driving maybe even longer than you. They doze off. The time you gotta hit the horn. I had a tractor just veering into my lane. I hit the horn. You know, you gotta watch those wheels. You can't watch the, the driver. So you gotta watch the wheels. The wheels are the cars or the vehicle's eyes. Watch those wheels. So you wanted to practice all these keys. So let's just go and wrap it up real quick. Uh, you want to look 15, rule number one, look as far as you can see, 15 seconds ahead, right? You want to get the big picture. That's pretty much putting it all together, bringing it to, into um, perspective, keeping it in perspective. Get the big picture all the time. Uh, after that, you want to uh, actually uh, keep your eyes moving. Keep your eyes moving. Keep them moving. Keep them moving. Yeah, look around. Look at the farm over here for a couple of seconds. Look for interesting things. Now, keeping your eyes moving also keeps you from being fatigued, in my opinion. It keeps the drive a little more exciting, you know, because now you, you know, your brain is processing something new. The adrenaline is flowing because you're looking at something new. Being from the city, I get to see farms. And I get to see mountain uh, tops. I get to see all kind of landscapes while making these drives up north. And it keeps me, keeps me going. I really don't have to take anything as far as drinking coffee or anything else. That's the natural high right there. So keep your eyes moving. After you keep your eyes moving, always leave yourself out because, like I say, you never know when you're going to have to dip that bus left or right, you know, out for emergency or whatever. you got to leave yourself an out. And number five, make sure they see you. Make sure your work, your lights are working. That's all in the pre-trip. Make sure your horn is working. It's all in the pre-trip. And don't make a move unless you use your mirrors and they see that you got your signals on, three seconds or better, and then make the maneuver. Yo guys, I hope this like kind of help you out. We're going to continue with our series. Next we're going to talk about getting lost. That seems to be a big thing. 
Uh, you guys coming now, you're afraid of getting lost, but don't don't fear. Everybody's been there. I've been there too. I still get turned around, especially with detours. So, you know, whether you're in your black and white or your blues, it don't matter. We're going to get turned around. I don't like to use the term lost because lost just means that you never got there and they're still looking for you a year later. Yeah, you'll be safe out there. I'll see you next time.